to take a look at SAGE HRMS. Um, so what we'll do today is not a whole uh, big deep dive, but we will be going into the um, just some of the features and functionality. The other thing that I wanted to show you guys today too is the employee self-service module. So it is another module that interfaces with SAGE HRMS. It takes the data from HRMS and pushes it out to the self-serve for the employees and also for managers. So I wanted to, to show you that at the, at the end of the, um, of the presentation today. So again, just ask any questions as we go along and Dee Dee will monitor um, the uh, chat box and she'll let me know when there are questions and, and then we'll go forward. So um, the first thing I wanted to do is show you the uh, front screen, this is the login screen for Sage HRMS, and you have different, uh, you can put different links here under the My Links, and then you'll see in the middle you have Sage Resources, there's, so there's some resources there, uh, Sage University and, and that type of thing. Um, then you, I can do an employee search over on the right. And so what I'm going to do is start out over on the left hand side, and I am logged in as the master, so I have all admin rights. So just like any other software, um, you can set up roles and rights in the system and just depending on criteria that you have. Um, we're not going to go into that today, but I just want to point that out. So the first thing I want to do is uh, give you a little tour of what it looks like when you put an employee into the system. A lot of uh, people tell us that they are not using a formal system like this. A lot of times they will use spreadsheets and maybe even still handwritten folders and things for employees. And a lot of times they're capturing this information, but it's just not in a cohesive way. So I'm going to show you what it would look like if you were in the system. So what I have here is a view edit of employees. So you'll see at the bottom I have my list of employees here. I can also do a, an employee find up here at the top if I want to do that. There's also a more options down here where if I said, well, I want to see all employees in a specific uh, uh, division, I could do that or department, location, um, or I want to see all employees that are assigned to a certain supervisor, I can do that as well. So there's a lot of good drill down into employee uh, queries and being able to find information. And then you'll notice I'm looking at only active employees. I can also say I want to see terminated or leave of absence or maybe only leave of absence employees. Um, so there's a lot of good uh, functionality there. So I'm going to choose my first guy on here and his name is Hugh Allen and I'm just going to double click that. And that's going to drill me down into Hugh. So you'll notice that his social security number is, um, is uh, X'd out. So you can't see that on here, uh, which is a good thing. It used to be it, it was there, it was, it was for everybody to see, and obviously these days you can't do that. So that's one of the, the features of the system. So on this basic demographic, so you'll see as I go along, up here I'm on personal, and then down here I have tabs, there's demographic, so it's basic demographic information, uh, personal information. I can put a photo of him on there. Uh, then also going across here, I can see HR status um, information is original hire date. So that has all the, the um, hire information there, employee eligibility. So you can put information in there about their I-9 and that type of thing. And uh, you'll also be able to put attachments on here. That's always a big thing that people ask is, how can I get rid of all this paper stuff that I have? So you could scan, and I'm going to show you that in just a second. You can scan that information in and attach it to the employee records here. And then everything's all in one place. I can also see um, if he were terminated. So I could see his termination information and then forwarding address here. Uh, if, he's leave of, if he's on leave of absence, I can see that here. You'll also notice on these screens that, so let's say, for example, uh, he's going on leave of absence. I could come here to his employee page, and down at the bottom I have an add button. So I can, from this screen, put him on leave of absence and fill out the information that's needed uh, for that leave of absence. So you don't have to go to a different place. It's right here on their employee record. 
And then also I can record an event, and that could be whatever you want it to be. And it could, like him, he's uh, volunteering, uh, and he's a safety leader, so he has different events that you can, um, you can record there for them. And then also notes. And again, that can be whatever you want it to be. So the notes can be, um, what I've seen people use the notes for is for uh, maybe if they were giving them a commendation, you know, at the com next company meeting, we're going to say how great you are and we're going to give you a certificate. You can put that in here so that you look back and you say, wow, you know, Hugh is a really good employee and we're going to give him a raise because he did this and this. You can also put notes in here about their um, performance reviews and things like that. So the notes area is pretty much anything you want it to be. And um, you can also set up who the author of those notes are. So I can see everybody that uh, maybe I put notes in for. Um, you can search by author as well. And then the next one is attachments. So this is the one that's, that's uh, um, really popular because everybody's trying to get rid of a lot of paper. So with the attachments, I can add any type of attachment on there that I want to. So their I-9, their W-4, their application, their resume, any, anything that you want to, you can add here on the attachments. And um, what it does is you scan it and it makes a copy of it and puts it under the Sage HRMS folder where it's installed. So um, it's not sitting out on your server somewhere. It's actually under underneath that um, that product. Then I can have contacts. I can have multiple contacts for this uh, for this employee as well. And then going across the top again, I have job and pay. So this is where I can see Hugh's uh, current pay, his current job, job history. Um, so his current pay is here, and there's a pay and performance, um, and then also uh, some user defined, and then a pet, uh, step rate. So the user defined can be anything really that you want it to be. So we would help you to determine what those user defined uh, look like and how you can use them. And then of course current job, and um, so he's the VP of Sales and Marketing, and his EEO class is here. So all that pertinent information about his job is held here on his record. The second piece to that is under the organization tab, I can have five different organization levels set up. So on this demo, it says division, department, location, not used, and then position. But that can be whatever you want it to be. You can have location first if that's most important to you, department, or you can have whatever you want it to be. And then you define what that looks like. So the importance of that is a couple things. It's for general ledger purposes. Um, so if you had uh, payroll, for example, um, if you were using the ABRA payroll, it would be important on the general ledger, but also it's important for reports. And you'll see when I look at the reports, how you can sort the reports by division, department, location, anything that you have in here. So that's where it, uh, where it comes into play. And then job history. This is another one that I like because it keeps track of the history from the beginning of when you hired that person. So you'll notice on Hugh down at the bottom, uh, we hired him in, two, in the year 2000, and what he was hired in at, what his title was, and what his um, salary was. And you can see through the years what's happened with him. So that whole job history is kept in the system. Uh, so I like that. So it's, it's easy, easy to see that information. And then also there's a tab here because my demo data um, says that I have Sage 100 payroll. So if you're using Sage 100 payroll instead of the payroll that's in the HRMS, that information will transfer back and forth. So if I ha have a new hire, the system of record will, re will really be the HRMS and that information will flow over into Sage 100. And then same thing um, if I do my payroll in Sage 100 and someone takes a day off, it will flow back into uh, the time off module here in HRMS. So uh, the, the information flows both ways. So I can set things up here and have it flow over to Sage 100 um, easily. It's, it's a very easy uh, process. And then back up again uh, across the top I have benefits. And this is another 
powerful feature, I think, of Sage HRMS is the benefits. I can set up, as you see, Hugh, he has a lot of different benefits. So I can set up any benefits, and there's a table behind it. So, for example, if um, I'll look at the H HMO benefit, I think that's one that has um, some dependence on it. So I can set up a table that says, okay, if this person has this benefit, has the HMO benefit, and they're single, it's this rate. And then let's say their criteria for that is uh, that they have uh, two children, it's this rate. If it's a family, it's this rate. So you can set the tables up and it will automatically calculate that for you. Um, so I'll show you here. It says cost and coverage for this HMO. And so it tells me here my monthly employee premium is $603. The employee or the dependent premium, of course, he has zero on here, but that would show you the dependents. It would calculate that automatically for you. And then the employee contribution, if he was paying any portion of that, you would see it. So where this kind of comes into play is on uh, some of the reports. So you'll be able to, which I'll show you in a few minutes, but you'll be able to get reports based on the benefit plan or the employee um, and then there'll be also a benefit letter. A lot of people say that they either don't do benefit letters just because it's it's a lot of work, or they do them and it's very manual. So I'll show you the benefit letter, and and um, and that's a good feature too. But this information plays into that. Um, so while I'm on this plan, I can see uh, his covered benefits are bene beneficiaries here, uh, covered dependents as well. Um, and then he has, of uh, course, life insurance to, um, and then you, you can set that up. So a lot of different uh, different ways that you can set things up and and uh, have it calculate for you. And then also at the top you have a savings benefit. So that's for uh, your 401k plan. So if I had a 401k plan, I can put in um, the uh, the employee's portion and also the employer's portion as well. So on here, he has a couple different of uh, 401k plans as well. So you can set that up here too, and then do um, uh, different reports and things by that. Then I have dependents and beneficiaries, so I can set him up here. And then there's some wellness information too. So if you want to keep track of uh, anything about these employees, you know, maybe blood type, uh, last blood donation, maybe you'll have a donation drive at, at your office, you could put that in there. Um, any kind of conditions. Um, physical exam, so you can put in here the last times they had physical exam and, and what that looked like, as well as a drug test. So you can keep track of drug testing in here as well. So that's that's all under the benefits uh, portion of the HRMS uh, module. Then um, again, across the top, I have my time off. So that's where you can record absence transactions. So there's a couple different things here that you can do. I can either add, so again, see my add button at the bottom. I can add those transactions. Or if I am, let's say I have stage 100 payroll, that information will flow into here. So you would see it, it would come from the payroll. We also have a connection um, with uh, a couple other outsourced pay, uh, payroll providers, uh, ADP and I think maybe paychecks and one other, and that information can flow in here as well. Or if you do payroll inside the HRMS, obviously it'll flow in here too. So there's a couple different ways to get that information. It doesn't have to be keyed, um, but we can get that information in there for you. So these are the transactions. And then also have an attendance summary that, um, that shows me what um, what he has accrued, what's he, what has he taken, what's available, uh, what's the date as of, um, and then for the year, um, and then the status as well. So that information can also print out on reports, and um, you can get that information in different ways as well. And then I'm not going to touch on the payroll today. That might be another session that we do. But I want to uh, jump over to the safety. So this is where I can record OSHA incident incidences uh, for an employee. So I'm going to, uh, Hugh has one here. So I'm going to log in and, and look at his uh, incidents that he has. 
maybe. There we go, sorry. Um, so again, I can add an incidence here and uh, it has, you know, what type it is, the in, 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 injury description, and these descriptions that you have on here are already pre-populated, but you'll notice you can also do an add new code. So there's a couple different ways you can, um, because I have admin rights, that's why I see that add new code. But what we would do in the beginning is help you to set up those codes so that you have a good list here. And then if you didn't want other people to add codes on the fly, then we would take that away, that restriction. So this is where you can just record all the OSHA incidents, I just cannot say that word today, incidences uh, for, for an employee. And you'll see the different tabs on here, location, incident, so you can say uh, what happened, uh, what, was, what was the treatment, is it covered under workers' comp, and what the claim number is. So what's nice about this is that if I look at this screen, and let's say he had uh, 10 different instance, incidences, I can see that all on this screen. So, you know, let's say it's time for his review and I'm looking at it going, my goodness, he is clumsy. You know, he's always tripping on the mat or he's this or that. So, uh, you know, some, something you might think about, maybe he needs additional training or something. Uh, but this would allow you to see that information very easily in the system. Um, so, so right on the employee record. You can also, from here, look at career information. So I can see skills, education, previous employer. So if you wanted to put that information in there about an employee, you can do that. And then you can search the database. So let's say if you needed someone that um, had a specific skill, maybe welding, for example, um, then you could search the database and say, oh, OK, Hugh has uh, welding. He knows how to weld. So you could do that, or if I'm looking for somebody that uh, went to uh, an accounting uh, school or something, or maybe even the education might even be just that they went out and got a certificate or something, you could do that as well, and then be able to search the database on that information. And then the next piece under here is custom. So this is one of the things that I like too and uh, about Aver HRMS because Anything that I want to keep track of about an employee, if it's not under these tabs that I just showed you, you can set up custom panels for that. So uh, here's one that says company property. And again, we would teach you all how to do this. But I can set up a panel that tells me, okay, he has a cell phone. And again, I have the little plus sign next to it. And these are custom fields that we set up. So you can say, uh, what date do we give it to him? What is it? Uh, what's the model number, the serial number? Who's it? You know, it's, Apple, it's from the Apple store. Any kind of information we can set up. You'll notice the items that are here that are in gray are items that are um, actually fields already in HRMS. But you can add them to these screens. The other fields are all custom that we added. So you can add. Uh, date fields, text fields, drop down. So this one is a drop down uh, field. Um, so I can add those to to any of the screens. So that's one of the other things that I think is is very powerful about this is that um, you know I think they've pretty well covered a lot of stuff. But if there are things like this, like company um, uh, property that you want to track, it's really easy. It's easy to add a screen. It's easy to add those fields to the screen. And then you can do lookups and reports and all kinds of things with it. Um, so it makes it very flexible. So here's um, all kinds of stuff. Like here's an onboarding checklist. Um, so there's all kinds of information in there on that those custom screens. So that makes it really nice. So again, if I look over on the left-hand side of the menu, we were looking at view, edit, employee. I can add a new hire. Um, the thing about the new hire is it acts as, uh, as, as like as a wizard. So when you add a new hire, it steps you through each of those screens. So you don't have to remember, oh, did I fill this out? Did I fill this out? It steps you through those screens that I was just showing you uh, where you can uh, put that in. And then also from the left, I can... Um, uh, the first part of this, the first half of uh, is where I can assign and do things for a specific employee like change job, change pay. Everything that you see here at the top 
is for a specific employee, but if I scroll down, then where it says processes, that is for a group of employees. So like you'll see mass update on here, or update benefits. So you know every year you probably get some kind of a renewal from the insurance company that uh, raises your rates. I'm not going to say lower your rates, but they raise your rates. Instead of going through each of the um, each of the employees, you would just say update benefits. It's 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 that HMO, and it's going to change from this to this, and it updates that for every employee in the system that has that particular um, insurance package. So. Everything under processes is where I can do mass updates and that affects all employees. And then everything above that affects just particular employees. Um, so it's, I think it's laid out pretty well, pretty easy to, to understand. So again, I'm going to go to time off down here on the left. And the time off is uh, where we were looking at earlier. You can see uh, the different plans that they're on and how much time they have taken. You can assign leave of absence, uh, return from leave of absence. So it's, it's very easy. And again, up here at the top, these are three are for specific employees, whereas these are for um, mass updating. So on the assigned leave of absence, I can just pick somebody and assign a leave of absence to them and fill out the, the information that's needed um, on there. So, so the time off. Uh, does that. And then I'm not going to do anything with the payroll today and I want to touch just a little bit on training. We're not going to touch a whole lot on it but I want you all to see this because um, I've been talking to several people recently about this, uh, uh, about how they want to track classes that employees take. So that could be, um, uh, you know, it could be anything. It could be um, you know, CPR classes, it could be anything that's for their certification that they need. Uh, I was talking to somebody the other day and they have welders and so they need like four or five different classes when they come on board. So what's nice about this is you can set up the courses with the classes underneath it and then say, okay, if a welder comes in, if that's his job description, it automatically puts those classes under his profile. And then from here you can track what classes have been taken and uh, who needs what class and that type of thing. So, um, so it's very it's very good. I, I, you know, a lot of people don't use it, but I've seen a lot of people that do use it. And it's really nice because a lot of times you're keeping track of that on a spreadsheet or manually in some way. So I just wanted to touch on that just a little bit. So that's a training module here. And I'm gonna go down to reports. Because this is always the the end result, right? Of everything you put in is is uh, is how do I get that out? What does that look like after I get everything in there? Now what? What do I what do I have? So you'll see on the left hand side all the list of, of reports. Now I'm not going to touch on every one of them, but there's a couple of them that I really want you all to see. And so under EEO reports, this is something that I hear people say that they do manually all the time. So are these EEO uh, headcount reports and, uh, you know, I had somebody the other day tell me that they do the VETS report by hand. So these report screens are nice because you see the, the list of the reports and then up here at the top you can see I have standard criteria and then I have specific criteria and that would be specific to each report. So um, for example, let me do this headcount uh, detail. So on my standard criteria, I can say I only want, uh, you know, maybe my engineering division or department, whatever I want, and then have specific criteria starting on, ending on, uh, employee type, you know, what kind of employee do I want to uh, report on, and uh, actually I want to take that criteria off because I'm not sure if I have it by in that criteria. Um, so I'm just going to tell it I want everybody. So down at the bottom, you'll see I can print that, I can preview it, I can export it out to Excel. So I have different uh, options there. And uh, this is what that report looks like. Um, so that's the headcount uh, detail report. And you'll see on there the, the person and, and uh, the EEO class there and all the information. So that's your basic EEO1 headcount report um, that you would do. 
So uh, probably some of the people on this call are doing those manually. Um, so this would be a, a big help for that. And then there's some of the other things that are on the uh, on that report list as well. And then again, over on the left, uh, there are, there are employee and organizational reports. So these are just basic reports, pulls the information, anniversary list, event report, new hire log, uh, different reports. And you'll notice again that you have that criteria across the top and then your print preview and export um, information. And then I can do some leave reports. So if I wanted to see uh, employees currently on FMLA, uh, employees currently on leave of absence, uh, FMLA due to return. So all that information is, is in the system as well. And then we are talking about OSHA earlier. So here's a, a good list. This kind of, um, this, these reports slice and dice that OSHA information quite a bit. So by injury, location, you know, by employee, by, uh, there's your OSHA incidents log. Um, so there's a lot of information in here that is pulling. Again, you know, it's like, and everybody knows this, you know, whatever goes in can come out, but if you don't put the information in, you're obviously not going to get the report. So kind of garbage in, garbage out. Um, so if you, we always say start with the end result, which would be the reports, and work backward and say, what do I need to capture in order to get these reports that I want? Um, so the reporting on here is really good. Then I have um, some um, personal information reports, so ageless birthday, uh, work phone, and that type of thing. And then under my benefits reports, so this is where um, you can you can say by employee, for example, what benefits do they have? So what, what HMOs do they have? What dental life and all that? Or I can do it the opposite way and say, okay, here's the plan. Here's my HMO plan. Who, who is subscribed to that? Um, so I can do it either way. And then you have uh, census reports and, and COBRA reports and things on there too. The one report I'm going to show you on here is, is the benefit letter because um, like I said earlier, this is one that I see um, a lot of people do it, either don't do it, and they say, oh, yeah, I'd love to do that, or they do it by hand. So um, it just depends. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to put any criteria on it. I'm just going to do a preview so you can see what it looks like. So this is a benefit report. And again, you can make changes to this because um, these reports are in crystal reports. And uh, you'll see it, it says, you know, dear Hugh, here's, Here's uh, here's your benefits. So it shows over here on the left the benefits, the coverage, uh, the, their annual premium. So that's what's paid to the insurance company, and then dependent premium, and then uh, their contribution, and their employer uh, annual contribution. So what I've seen people do on this report is put another column over here on the right and do that ca that calculation uh, for each line item that says, okay, here was your premium, here's what you paid. But you know, here's what we actually paid. The employer actually paid for you. So um, that's nice. Oh, I'm sorry. It already has that on there. I was thinking we added it. It's separate. Then down toward the bottom, you have your savings benefits. So you have your 401k information on there as well. And then you also, it gives you a little summary down here at the bottom. It says your current annual pay. Uh, you, it totals up your benefits here and tells you that you know we're giving you uh, so many of uh, what percentage over your addition to your pay. Um, so he has 17.64% in addition to your pay you're getting um, as benefits. So that's, uh, that is a really good report that we see a lot of people do and uh, do it by hand and like to see it in this way, being able to easily do it. So. Um, it seems like I am having a technical issue here. Does not want me to get out of this benefit letter. I guess it likes it. Um, well, I wonder if it's a print preview, Annette, the print preview I see up there, could it be that possibly? No, I wonder, it, it kind of did a weird little jump and I wondered that too, but I don't, I can't, uh, there's nothing I can do with it. It just doesn't want to, does not want to move. 
Hmm. Yeah, I was thinking maybe it, it had uh, I, it had slowed down. So I don't know if I've lost a can. Oh, there it is. There it is. Sorry, you all. It must have uh, lost a connection temporarily. So, so anyway, that's the benefit letter. So that's a very good, um, very good one to uh, give to your employees. A lot of people do it at the at the year end, like with their final W two. And then I have skills and education reports, and then wellness reports. So I have a lot of different reports. So basically, any information that you're putting into the system, uh, you'll be able to get out of the system. And then also here is a secure query. And what this does is it's an addition to the reports. You can do queries on the information. So we have some people that say, you know, I just want a quick, uh, like this one here, for example, employee home phone list. You know, I don't want to do a report. I just want a real quick uh, employee home phone list. So the uh, secure query allows you to go through and create that really easily. It shows you the fields on there and uh, shows you um, how to how to it, it takes you through a, a wizard, so it shows you how to populate that report with that information. So those are really easy, and, and then like you see on here, you can save that information uh, or that query for another time. So if you wanted to use it another time, you could. And um, again, you can um, export that out to Excel if you wanted to. You can email those queries. You can print them. So there's a lot of different different things that you can do with that. But that comes with the system. It's a secure query is what it's called. Um, so Dee Dee, do we have any questions so far? Yes, actually, um, I just got one. They're saying, we are using spreadsheets currently to keep track of employees. Can we get that information into this system? Yes. Um, in fact, that's uh, like I said earlier. It's, it's very common that that happens. So we can take those spreadsheets and import them in uh, into the system um, as well. You can also uh, another thing because um, I think that some of the people on this call are Sage 100 customers. You can also let's say you're doing uh, payroll in Sage 100. The interface between uh, Sage 100 and Sage HRMS allows you to bring those employees over from Sage 100 into Sage HRMS so you don't have to rekey them. So brings over the employee demographic, their um, employee number, name, address, and all the demographic. All the, a lot of the other information is not kept in Sage 100, so you'd have to, to manually like their benefits and things like that. Um, but yes, it can come over. I have another else, question in that. Yes, I have a question. They asked about, can the onboarding process be automated? We have all Still, that paperwork. That, can we automate it with this system? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so all the paperwork and everything that's, that goes uh, to, for a new hire can be automated. There is a, um, a module that you can add to the system called HR Actions. And if anybody's interested in it, we can send you information about it. Um, but it automates that whole process. So um, the employee fills out all the information themselves, and it goes through and routes it to, uh, to the appropriate people for uh, approval and that type of thing. So you can you can um, route that whole information and make it more automated and uh, get rid of all that paper. So once it's done, it stores it. Actually, it stores it here where I'm going to show you in just a second, the employee self-service module. So you can get rid of all that paperwork. Yeah, very good question. So where I am now is I have gone into the employee self-serve module. and Again, the HRS, Sage HRMS is the system of record for everything. So all that information that we put in there can be uh, seen in the employee self-service module. So, and that, that is automated. So if I went in and I added, uh, let's say I changed somebody's um, address in the Sage HRMS, it's going to immediately show up over here under the self-service module. So the self-service module has a couple different components to it. 
you um, can use it as a supervisor. I'm logged in as a supervisor, Veronica Bell, or uh, you can use it as an employee. So um, one of the big uh, things that we see people want to do here is for their employees to be able to request time off. So instead of filling out you know, paperwork and uh, submitting it to their supervisor and doing all that, they can come onto their employee's self-service module and uh, submit time off. The other thing that you can do is they can see uh, you know, how much time do I have? So how many, how many phone calls do you get a day? Somebody calling saying, I want to take vacation next month. How much time do I have available? Well, this employee self-serve uh, takes that away because they can go in and they can see it all themselves. So you'll see there's a dashboard here. And again, each person's dashboard can be different. Um, I'm logged in as a supervisor, so I can see my time off. And I can see... Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I timed out. I need to log back in. So everyone has a secured uh, login to the system. And they would see their own dashboard that was set up for them with their information. So this is my dashboard and it has my time off. Now I'm a supervisor, so I'm going to see my employee's compensation. So whoever I am uh, connected to as an employee, um, I would see their information on here. And over, over on the right, you see uh, recent messages. So uh, this recent message is nice because let's say if I'm an employee and I do a time off request, then I'm going to see over here on the right-hand side that I requested that and it's still pending. Or uh, when it's approved by my supervisor, I would get a message saying your time off has been approved or it could be rejected for some reason. So you're going to get that message uh, here on your dashboard. Um, and then you can do open enrollment status here. Again, I'm, I'm logged in as an employer or a supervisor. And my employees by length of service, so I have that on here. Um, I like this one down here at the bottom too. My employees time off. So I can look and see what employees are off uh, today. You know, what does what does that look like for my uh, team? Um, my employees performance review, employees jobs, and again, this is a dashboard that is specific to each employee. So um, just depends on what they want to see. And then here are my current benefits. So I have uh, on this dashboard, since I'm a supervisor, I have a mix of my stuff and my employees stuff as well. And then you'll notice over on the left-hand side uh, all the different things that uh, that you can see on this dashboard. Um, and again, it all comes from the HRMS. So you have your skills here, uh, have events. So all that's coming from HRMS. And then the time off is one that allows you to add to it. So the reason I know that is because there's a little plus sign up here at the top. So all the other screens are informational. But if you see a little plus sign, that means that I can go in and on here, um, I can request time off. So I can just add that little plus sign uh, or be able to do that on here. And again, it doesn't mean he's going to get it. Just because I apply for it just means that I'm, I'm requesting it for my supervisor. And I, as a supervisor, would get that on my dashboard saying that, you know, Dee Dee asked for um, a couple days off in April. So, and then I would approve that as well. So it's a uh, really the, the employee self-serve is really nice. Then I can see benefits. So I have life, um, life uh, events, current benefits. So I have uh, my current. So this is, you know, as an employee, this is what I would be looking at. This is my current uh, benefits. Um, and it, it, what's I thought nice about this too, because it tells, uh, tells the employee how much the employer is putting in and how much they're putting in. So you kind of see it there a um, little bit, you know, in your face um, there too. The other thing that you can do here down here at the bottom is um, you can you can use this, I hate to say the word filing cabinet, but you can actually put like your handbook and other uh, other things onto the system so that people can can look at it. So if they had a question about anything in the handbook, instead of coming to you and saying, well, you know, is that in the handbook? Can you give me a copy of the handbook? It's right here on their employee self-serve. So uh, they're able to see all that information right here. 
uh, their pay histories here, uh, their performance reviews, all that information is, is right here at their fingertips. And then their training, uh, I like this too, because you can see uh, for each employee, they can log in and see what training they need to take and what's still pending and that type of thing. So here you can see training history. I am enrolled in the AR, HR Action Self-Appraisal, but I haven't completed it yet. And all these other things are completed. So it, it tells them right away what they need to do. And then down here at the bottom, I have my other menus. So uh, there's an HR Actions on here and then uh, Time and Attendance. So there's different options here uh, that you can look at. The other thing uh, that's on here is you'll notice when I go to my current benefits over on the right hand side you can actually there's a um, another module that plugs into this that will interface directly with your insurance like Humana or Blue Cross whoever you have Anthem whoever it is and uh, you can submit information uh, to them uh, from here from this employee self-serve module um, so that's it's it kind of interesting or you could have a, uh, again, kind of going back to the filing cabinet uh, thing, uh, you can also have their uh, information on here as far as what the, what the benefits cover and that type of thing. So the employee self-serve really is for your employees to stop calling you and saying, you know, what, you know, what's the status of this or what's this and what's that. It puts it all at their fingertips as well. So the other thing, um, and I always get this question too, is this employee self-serve is mobile. So they don't have to be logged into a computer. They can see it on their uh, phone or iPad or you know however you want to. Um, so it's just it's a really nice feature. I see more and more people interested in, in having their employees uh, manage things uh, rather than them getting all the questions. So it, it makes it nice. Um, of course there's different reports and things on here as well. And it's all controlled by security. So if you said, I don't want my employees to be able to see or be able to, to ask for time off on here, I don't know why you wouldn't, but some people say, well, I don't want that. I want them to have that freedom. Um, under security, we can take that off. They could see the time that they have, but maybe not ask for time off. Uh, so there's a lot of different things security-wise that you can do with this. Um, but I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really nice feature and uh, really relatively inexpensive for what it what it does um, and then also up here at the top I can click on this little message center so it tells me as an employee all my messages so I have requested eight hours of vacation uh, you know has it been approved or not what's what's going on with that um, and then as a supervisor it shows me that uh, the approvals that I have to do so it tells me my status so Clint Eastwood he changed his home address and uh, so I'm going to just going to approve that because I like Clint. Um, you can also put a note on there too. So even though I'm approving, I might say um, uh, congratulations on the move, and they're going to see that message. So, or you can say, you know, I really don't want you to take this time off, but I'm approving it anyway. You know, please make sure that um, you don't take any more time off till the end of the year. You know, something like that. So. It allows you to put notes and things on the on the different messages as well. Um, I think Aditi, do you have any other questions that came in, or anybody want to see anything more? Um, someone's asking, could you please review the processes section once again on the HR piece? I think is probably yes, what they're asking. Yes. Okay. So if I go back into HRMS, under employees, I have tasks, which are uh, employee specific. But then if I look at processes, um, this is where I can do mass updates, and and they they are for uh, a group of employees for example. So if I wanted to update uh, benefits, if I had a change in my HMO benefits, um, then I can make that change here. So what happens with the update benefits is um, 
because that's a really good example because it happens every year. In the tables that are behind the HMO, for example, or whatever, life insurance, whatever it is, um, we would put in the new rates and then come here under processes and it pushes, and I'll say mass update, it'll push those new rates out to all the, all the employees that have those benefits. So I don't know if that's what, what whoever asked the question is looking for or if there's more other information. No, they said that's that helps. Thank you. Okay. And I don't okay. have any other questions at this point. Okay. Okay, great. Well, um, we're going to give you back about, what, about 10, 14 minutes of your day. So thank you all for coming. And uh, we have recorded this, and it will be out on our website. So if you wanted to have anybody else uh, listen to it, I believe we sent them a link, don't we, Didi, to the recording? Or we can. We can yes, send we can them a link that. to the recording. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so if you had anybody else that didn't uh, wasn't able to join this morning, then uh, they would be able to listen to the recording. So uh, just let us know if you have any other questions, and we will see you guys later. Thank you. Thank you.